Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Today's October 9th, and we're doing business and social stories for your hump day. And Microsoft, they are going with the carrot instead of Amazon's stick. <laughs> Microsoft exec reassures staff there is no plan for an Amazon style return to office. The Amazon. But which, there's an exception. Yeah. Mm. If your productivity stays the same. This is actually probably a, an interesting move to hack productivity because teams and team leaders are going to look at their team's productivity and say, we really need a team that is super productivity, super productive, and they're probably going to get rid of people that aren't productive for work from home or try to get those people to switch to work from home. So some people may be asked not to work from home, which is probably fine. Oh, uh, yeah. My immediate question was, how do they define productivity and will they just define it arbitrarily so they can get rid of people they asked in the article and microsoft declined to elaborate because a lot of the time when microsoft comes up with ranking systems the ranking system is gamed they were <laughs> metrics <laughs> yeah they were famously they came up with this thing called stack ranking a long time ago and then it was just it was corrupted to the point that, that it was unrecognizable by the end gold star stickers or house points like in harry potter yeah yeah basically and our entire world has been corrupted, and uh, you know how it's looking more and more like those dystopian novels, like uh, Hunger Games, where Sweet everything's game, yeah. it's like a spectacle, and you just have to participate and hope that you win in order to eat. The Verge's headline is, Amazon is launching its own Shark Tank, where winners get to be Amazon sellers. We would have definitely gone with the headline, Amazon is launching its own game, like Squid Game, where the winners get to be Amazon sellers. <laughs> well, the, no, this is, you describe your, your thing to us, and then we make it cheaper and sell it on Amazon Basics. No, it's going to have... Uh, they own it. A rotating panel of celebrity judges, Gwyneth Paltrow, Anthony Anderson, Tabitha Brown, Tony Hawk, and so forth. What do all those people have in common? Product lines. So they will be selling their own products. So it's basically one big commercial for Amazon products and celebrity products. I love the story of uh, Scrub Daddy from Shark Tank where it's just a dude shows up and he's like, I want to make a reasonable kitchen sponge. That's all I want in life is to just make a reasonable kitchen sponge at a reasonable price that's not from Procter & Gamble or anybody else. And he kind of had a hard time on Shark Tank, but he did it. And like Scrub yeah, Daddy, yeah. like, just like, it's like, holy shit. Scrub Daddy in our yeah, sink, yeah. Yeah, so it's just... It's just like, I just want to make a reasonable, it's like, I'm my life is about the reasonable kitchen sponge. sponge. I'm amazed that Gwyneth Paltrow's on that, that panel, because she's kind of like known to, you know, go for the really expensive, like... Things that don't make sense. Yeah, and so it's like, I'm surprised she would combo with Amazon. It probably feels a little basic for her. So the level one could do the reasonable person's version of this and probably be wildly more successful? No, because we don't have the celebrity backing. <laughs> So, and the well, and the twenty thousand dollars to give to people. The scrub daddy guy didn't either, and yet it's like I'm going to hyper focus on the world's most reasonable toothbrush. <laughs> well, reasonable is how we can define Gabe Newell and Steam because just in comparison to all the other corporations, especially in the gaming business, it is a shining beacon. Steam will now let you sue Valve. This is a follow-up to what we talked about last week where it was a change in the subscriber agreement. Valve found that when arbitration happened, um, you know, going through an arbitration company, this may be a little too easy. Valve wants an actual lawsuit now, which is a taller hill to climb for individuals that feel that they have been wronged. But the Uber story. Yeah. yeah. That also keeps them from playing games with, you know you agreeing not to do things like that. So I think it's a positive overall. It probably protects them and so to some degree, but also, oh, Crystal, we forgot to let you... Uh, oh, about TechCrunch. To, to you can do it. Well, good, good news, everyone. Well, that was another TechCrunch article. Another one, yeah. Raspberry Pi launches a camera module for vision-based AI applications. Because it turns out a lot of people are buying a lot of Raspberry Pis for basic AF vision applications. This little camera will do some of the AI workload outside of the other hardware, which is going to be limited on a Raspberry Pi. So if you want some base, if you want to do your own version of the Ray-Ban smart glasses, you don't got to buy the Ray-Ban smart glasses. You can roll your own. All right, Krista. All right. So I like, I like the bold color. I really like their nav bar with the, if they were using a, a CSS blend mode to get that like blur. It's hard to see from here, but 
the one thing I don't like, so on this page, if you scroll down, like, see how it's just like a nice floating nav bar or whatever? Click on latest. Now scroll down. Look at that. Why, why did they make that? They okay. put a white background behind it. Mm. Why would you do that? I also think that um, it makes it would make picking at the image for the article a little tricky because if you have something important going on in the top third of the picture, it's mm. going to be obscured by the nav bar. I will say I was impressed. I looked up articles from like 2022 and 2023 and just to see if they would fit in this new layout, and they did. They actually like considered how it worked with their old catalog. It's interesting that they went with like the mega menu. Yeah, I don't. It's want almost that. like a footer menu, but they have a footer menu. A lot of the yeah. a lot of the mega menu, that kind of a mega menu, is really good for SEO because it makes your site short and fat from a tree view. Mm. And Google has gotten real lazy about deep linking. Yeah, I don't think people probably use. I'll be honest. Like, I don't. I don't know because I've seen their analytics. I bet no one clicks on that menu. They probably almost click on the top links at the top. Well, the AI war, as we've said, is it's burning hot and it's at the point where they don't even have enough ammunition we literally have to start nuclear reactors so that there's enough ordnance for this war <laughs> and there's a new player entering the game ai chip maker cerebrus is that how you say that files for ipo to take on nvidia oh well, if it were turned out like how tolkien would be cerebrus <laughs> i think they're talking brain right yeah cerebrus. cerebral yeah. 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 No, I think we should pronounce it with the elvish k sound. <laughs> Did you notice the other Lord of the Rings name? Like every Lord of the Rings name company is just the purest evil. Yeah, they are. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> these are the these. This is the company doing the wafer scale AI. They just have one chip that is an entire wafer, and if parts of it are defective, they just turn off that part of the chip, which is brilliant and also scary. Well, they got they're, they're going public, and they got a bunch of money, and they are saying yes, we're going to take on Nvidia, and we're going to be the AI chip company. It's a bold strategy to be a more cost-effective part. It's like you just make everything in a giant wafer and it doesn't matter that there's going to be defects on the wafer. It's just they figure out which parts of the wafer are defective and they just turn them off. But they don't bother trying to slice it up or bin it. or It's just like, this is the wafer. This is what you get. And speaking of wafers, AMD is kind of winning the CPU war right now by default. <laughs> it's just that Intel is doing so poorly that they don't have to be that good. But they did have a little bit of a stumble. People were a little disappointed with the recent release. They claim they fixed it. AMD improves Zen 5 CPU latency and performance with BIOS updates. Windows and BIOS updates are improving Ryzen 9000 series performance. Yes, basically. Although, you know, I don't think AMD is ever going to recover from the zen 5 launch but zen 5 at launch is worse than zen 5 just a month or two later like zen 5 now is, is reasonable but if you can still get zen 4 parts on fire sale the zen 4 parts are still the better deal freaky and if you are in the carolinas you're probably not watching this because <laughs> nah, you might have no power but if you do have power you definitely don't have internet access except you might because of this company, and that is a beautiful PR move. And they've got some more good news for you. Starlink surpasses 4 million subscribers, cementing dominance in the satellite market. And if you're in the Carolinas, Starlink is completely free for the first 30 days or the next 30 days. So basically, if you've got a Starlink terminal, it's on, it works, it's plug and play. They don't need to know who you are. They don't need to know anything. It just works. And I think they're airdropping them or something, right? Yeah. They're giving... Uh, the actual hardware out for free. I don't know if they get to keep it forever, but... Now, I don't think this article went into it, but Elon Musk really rubbed it in because he said that um, FEMA, if the FTC hadn't done... You know the FTC, how they said, all oh, Starlink doesn't qualify as broadband or whatever? That had a knock-on effect through for a whole bunch of government programs. One of them was, was FEMA for like emergency internet access. Because apparently FEMA has cases of cell phones and crap like that for emergency response or supplies... And one of the things that they had on the federal contract was like 19,000 Starlink terminals. And, and Starlink was going to supply those to, for you know, the government to hand out in a situation like this. And so because the FTC said, no, Starlink is not whatever, they didn't, they didn't buy the terminals. They don't have them. But Elon Musk was like, here's the spreadsheet. Here's the thing. We're ready to do this. And you know what? 30 days free Starlink, which is really like kind of a power move. It's sort of funny. I like it. Heartbreakingly, it might last that long before they can get anywhere near back to normal. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be longer than 30 days. 
Oh, it might be 30 days before they have power. Yeah. Or water. And uh, that's the kind of thing that you usually see in a war zone, which is interesting because this man apparently wants that for all of us for the rest of time. Palmer Lucky says every country needs a warrior class, quote unquote, excited to enact violence on others in the pursuit of good aims, unquote. I, Somebody should enact some violence on him <laughs> in the pursuit of good aims. <laughs> Well, I really feel like he could have phrased this better because, like, <laughs> it would be amazing. Like, you read about all this, these natural disasters that happened in, the, like, the 1950s, 19, 1940s, 1950s, 1960s. 2024, 2023. <laughs> well, no, no, I mean, and then the government response is what I'm talking about. And this may be just, like, his, historical revisionism, but it's like, oh, the Army Corps of Engineers came in and they built this dam in, like, three weeks. Or they built a bridge or they did this thing and it's it's still standing. And it's like, that is the kind of, like, I could get a warrior class visiting violence upon you know the aftermath of a nature thing like that hell yeah that sounds amazing but you know who that doesn't benefit defense contractors um, why would you need to build missiles <laughs> preemptive action seems to be something we struggle with like, so it would be great if we could do something before the massive flood comes uh, we, we had we i don't know if it's revisionism again but like in the 40s 50s 60s it seemed like that that was a thing so Mr. Lucky is talking about his AI defense company that he wants to create and or has already created, I guess, and uh, automated weaponry. And he claims that he is the warrior, like he's not going to go fight. Look at that face. Yeah, Tell yeah. me that man's a warrior. Oh, yeah. That's a keyboard warrior right there. And that's what he is pitching himself as. He's going to let the robots do the fighting for him. And he showed a little like robots destroying things video to hype the college kids up mm. before he gave this. Now... Uh, Anduril, Anduril. Yeah. Andrew, What's the yeah. pronunciation? Oh, well, I, I, I know the word, but how I pronounce it, I have no idea. And Andrew, I think. You don't know how to pronounce it? Well, no, I'm terrible at pronouncing the words. For when I first read Fellowship of the Ring, it took me till I saw the movies, like a year later. I, re- I, I pronounced Boromir as Boromir because that's just ever, how I thought it was pronounced. You ever read a book and then you see the movie and it's a conf- conflict with how you imagined it? And yeah, you just yeah. Can't it's like oh. That? So that's the name of his company. He's stolen it from Tolkien, obviously. Uh, when th- This is how much of a douchebag this guy is. For giving the speech, the other guy was like, hey, look, we got you this like super limited first edition whatever Lord of the Rings book set. Mm-hmm. And he was like, no, nah, I can't put that on my motorcycle. I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just need to enact violence on others. <laughs> <laughs> for good aims. Well, be careful about him because he's got like defensive drones, probably. Uh. You know, when you were talking about the pronunciation, it was it reminded me of the story of uh, Brent Spiner thought that his character on Star Trek should be pronounced Data, and then he heard Patrick Stewart do a read, and it, it was like, oh yes, Lieutenant Commander Data, and then he was like, nope, yep, it's Data. <laughs> I'm changed it now. I don't like it when people refer to Data in the plural. Do you like that? Datas, datum. No, they just just the word data, but then they reference it in the plural. Oh. These data have oh, been. Oh, yeah. that doesn't seem right. I, but it's they do it in uh, news articles. I don't know if it's these correct. These data and, that yeah. can't be right. It sounds it sounds like some crazy harebrained Oxford thing. It's engagement challenge. Do you use data in the plural like that? It's like just because they came up with the comma doesn't mean their other ideas these are good. Data. How else would you? I would just say this data regardless. That's interesting. That's an interesting linguistic query. Well, this is not interesting. It's disgusting. And it just is a trend that we see that it keeps going and going. And eventually, I suspect that it will be, you will own nothing. Mazda's $10 subscription for remote start sparks backlash after killing open source option. And this is also, you know, something that Lewis Rossman was correctly pointing out the insanity of because remote start, you could just hit a remote on your like it doesn't need an API. It doesn't need the cloud. You 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 don't need to stop. It's like putting the cloud in a toaster. It's like, oh your cloud's toaster connected. So the one on the fob, they got rid of that. Like just the proximity one? Gone. No, it's gone. And you must do it through the app and you must pay $120 a year for that privilege. And they did a DMCA takedown of the dude that figured out how to just Call the car and be like, hey, turn on. Okay. Sometimes you must enact violence. <laughs> That's such a good quote. I'm going to be saying that all the time now. And North Not Carolina, seriously. poor North Carolina, man, they got wrecked. 
so did South Carolina. And uh, you find out where all the little hot spots are of things that we need as nature destroys them. <laughs> Helene took out a North Carolina town the entire tech world relies on. They're talking about pure uh, quartz crucibles, which are useful for creating ultra pure silicon ingots, which is what the modern world depends on. And basically all of it comes from this one little town. Uh, it, and it would take a couple of years to replace them. They, uh, they had some flooding. Don't know how bad it is, but they're going to be offline for a month or two. But they're probably going to come back online much faster than the surrounding territories <laughs> because there's a considerable interest among big tech to get that back online. Again, wouldn't this be a fun exercise for the Department of Defense? Just like, hey, let's go get this thing back online as, as soon as possible. Mobilize everything and make sure it works. That seems reasonable. Let's, let's test our contingency plans now. I should have put this together with the last one because this is more of let's put it in the cloud and you'll <laughs> never have to worry about it until one day the cloud blows away intellex uh intellex way is that how you say that intellex way north america name. is shutting yeah. down here's what we know this was a, a, a smart charger platform like they made their own smart chargers and there was an app and you could find well they're shutting down and that also means the smart chargers won't be able to dispense the electricity that is oh so close to being dispensed because everything depends on an app in the cloud because it's poorly engineered well it will still charge but you won't be able to change any of the settings one guy commented, he was like, hey, I live in a condo and I don't have enough power draw because of the building. So I actually had to cut down the power that came out of mine, which was fine. I could do that. It gave you the control over that. Now I won't be able to. So I won't be able to ever charge my car and make toast at the same time. <laughs> Oops. So this is, uh, they're leaving the country because... In every other place, they sell power and EV chargers, which lets them make money on the back end. But in America, they they don't have power to sell. So it's just like, ah, eh, we're done. What if they could sell a subscription to the app? I still, I think they still can't make money. <laughs> this was also one of the few government-approved home chargers to get the rebates and stuff. Yeah. So the government was literally like, you should get this one. This is the one to get, and everybody got it. And now it's just it's so, down to basic. Some enterprising entrepreneur in Taiwan is going to make a non idiocy conversion kit for those, and it's just going to solve all the problems. Well, there's already another company that in the story, they're like, hey, we can just come over and do the conversion. Just call us. <laughs> we'll do the story about that reasonable person being reasonable with these unreasonable chargers in the future. Speaking of unreasonable, mm. behind OpenAI's audacious plan, audacious, audacious <laughs> plan to make AI flow like electricity. I didn't even register that was wrong until you corrected it. I was like, all right. <clears throat> so Sam Altman's at it again. He's making the U.S. government nervous because he's taking a lot of money from Middle Eastern countries and, and businessmen. But he really, really wants to build that trillion dollar data center. Now, for this, he's scaled back a little bit. But I assure you, he has not scaled back. He's only scaled back on what he's saying, not what he's thinking. And uh, they really, really want to build uh, and control all of the software and the platform and everything so that you can just delegate all of your stuff to AI. So those data centers would be in the Middle East, where the power would in be. The, in the line city. <laughs> yeah. And they would be, you know, making big decisions clearly about our world, too. And so that's something to worry about. But, you know, he's a global citizen. He doesn't consider himself... A citizen of any country. Mm. That's, a, that's a pleb thing. He's not wrong when he says that if this is done correctly, it will benefit all mankind. But I would really, really want to emphasize the if done correctly. Which if we look at where <laughs> OpenAI is going in terms of we're not a non-profit anymore. We're totally for profit and we're giving him a piece of it. Yeah. Maybe not. Uh, yeah. And uh, this is a trend that we've been seeing more and more and more of and we got two this week google's ai search summaries officially have ads so if you ask google for something it's like oh i've got these matching products would you like some arm and hammer i really have a lot of unilever products this week that i think you'll be interested in <laughs> well you've, you've said Unilever. it's probably we're gonna get ads for that on this video <laughs> well if not this video you're gonna get them somewhere uh. more ads are coming to amazon prime video <laughs> The executive here, you should read this and your skin will crawl at the lizard speak. This is, is it not Jennifer Salk? Yeah, oh, this is yeah. not the same species. 
at all. It's just like, we just wanted to gently introduce people to the platform with a low amount of ads so that they would get used to ads in the first place. But now, yes, there's going to be more ads and they're going to have to pay for it because what do you expect? Lines got to go up. <laughs> you know how much money we spent on Rings of Power? We are not getting our investment back on that. <laughs> there's also a quote in there. It's just like, we were really surprised that there was no churn when we put the ads in there. The plebs just tolerated it. So, of course, we'll be adding more. I assume... I, I guess I I never think to like, oh, I, I would never get a Prime subscription for a show. No, I never look at it. Yeah. I've actually at, like magic hard drived something before mm. without realizing that it was on Amazon Prime. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't really want to watch it on there. One of, one of my, the one, something that I started doing the last couple of months is um, the estate bot that watches for things now also watches for DVDs. I got the complete, like, the, there's, like, this amazing edition of the complete Babylon 5 that was, like, the signature edition, and I got it for $8. I have a bunch of DVDs in my bag over there. Most of the I'm estate sales have, like, records and stuff, though. So the golden age of that is probably another five or ten years. <laughs> And Apple is making some new rules that uh, shockingly hurt competitors and don't apply to Apple apps. Have we heard that one ever before? The headline is, did Apple just kill social apps? And this is a practice that is abused. What they're talking about is you have your contact list in your Apple phone. And your contact list in your Apple phone can be a source for applications to figure out who that you know that also uses the application. So assume that you have like Netflix or something like that and it's like you want to watch together on Netflix. Um, Netflix could go through your contact list and say, oh, hey, these seven people also have Netflix. Would you like to like try to watch together the new Netflix release? Yeah. And Spotify you know, does that too. Yeah, it's, well, Netflix doesn't do this. So I, did, I didn't know what actually worked like this that's modern. But so like Spotify or whatever. The problem is that you have... Um, a lot of applications that use that as a way to try to get more people to use the app. And most of the time, that's annoying and stupid. I, I certainly know that when I get contact requests, it's like, this, your friend uses this app. Would you like to use this app? That, uh, that friend is blocked. <laughs> I've, never, I've never gotten that prompt while using something and been like, yeah, my friend would appreciate if I signed them up for this. So Apple is taking that functionality out. But, but not for Apple products. Yeah, not for Apple no. products. And Apple is also removing everything from the Play Store that the big tech companies don't like. The headline is, Juno for YouTube has been removed by the Apple App Store for violating the YouTube Terms of Service. But it doesn't. This was a <sighs> YouTube video player for Vision. So if you want to wear your VR headset and watch a YouTube video, this was a player for that. YouTube does not offer one, crucially, for the, the headset. Not only does it not use the API, this is just using the embed functionality the, and for at first and then later it was the web player so this is literally just embedding the website in a safari control so this is no different than just having a browser window without the chrome without the decorations for the window sized appropriately for vision and then letting the responsive web thing do its thing so that you can play a video on your headset and google said no and this guy was like in that tone too. Yeah. I'm not no. I'm not playing games with YouTube. It was a four ninety nine app and he was like, Yeah, I had some fun with it, but what I'm not <laughs> I made my money. Yeah. It, it was the Reddit Apollo author. Mm. So, you know, a reasonable person trying to do a reasonable thing ground down by a giant corporation that does not care. Interestingly, now you mentioned the the web view thing. He did use the API in a previous version. And it, YouTube, it was the embed API, which was permissible. I think this would be a permissible use. But YouTube was like, hey, you can't be doing this. And he was like, well, okay, I'll redo the whole thing and make it the other way. Doesn't matter. Yeah. They don't really care about the technicality. They just care that you're doing it. Which is also true of another company. Yeah. And, uh, well, this was earlier this year, right? Mm -hmm. like, like maybe spring, winter? Yep. Yeah, and so the outrage clock has run out, and we can do it again. Nintendo reportedly shut down Reunix. The, I don't know how you say that. The Switch emulator that was uh, supposedly immune, the main competitor to Yuzu, previously shuttered by Nintendo, has gone silent too. How did Nintendo do it? They had private investigators show up to the guy's house with an offer that he could not refuse. He was Brazilian, or at least they assume he's Brazilian, and apparently Brazil does not play ball with these kinds of requests. They're like, no, our people can do what they want. 
So there's probably it was probably just bought him out, right? Suitcase full of money or a shotgun. What was the the drug cartel guy? I can't remember the phrase, but it was Spanish for uh, silver or lead. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> if you don't take the silver, you get the lead. Yeah, that is definitely Nintendo's mo. I, uh, I I definitely do not agree with this, and a lot of there's already probably apologists in the comments saying it's like oh Nintendo's right to do this da 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 da. No, it's not. Um, look up Sony and Bleem um, was the first high profile case of this kind of thing. It's like emulating the Sony PlayStation, which was perfectly legal under U.S. law. Um, this is the, I thought the the whole Bleem case and the way the Sony thing struck a reasonable balance that was slightly skewed for Sony. And since then it has eroded, 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 and eroded. This is not reasonable behavior on Nintendo's part at all. If you're anywhere in the Southeast United States, you are probably currently realizing the fallacy of a cashless society to some degree, because things uh, can happen that can cause that not to work at all, but you don't need a natural disaster for that. Bank of America is down. Users report their bank their accounts are showing an empty balance during a widespread outage. And this lasted about eight hours, which is kind of a long time for your bank to be down if you needed to do things. Mm. Like eat or drive. Assuming you didn't have cash. Yeah. I see what you did there. And VMware. <laughs> Boy, did they change the rules. <laughs> and you might have prayed that they didn't alter it further, but they're going to do it. And it doesn't matter who you are. AT&T claims VMware by Broadcom offered a 1,050% raise in the amount of money that they were asking to manage their VMware licenses. <laughs> AT&T was, uh, like, they had their response included in this, and it was very polite, considering <laughs> the amount. I like how it's like, we consider, this is not how we expect our partners to behave. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, was very, it was very polite. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> At this point, I have to wonder, you know, with the Broadcom VMware acquisition, if they looked at this when they were looking for the acquisition, was this the plan all along, or was the plan to turn up the the fees? I don't know, a hundred percent, double them, and uh, enough people are jumping ship that they're saying, "Oh, we need to we need to put a lid on this sooner rather than later," and they're going for the thousand percent route. <laughs> it didn't work before, but it might work this time. Now, what's AT and T going to do? Go somewhere else? Broad, well, yeah, because Broadcom announced this in 2023, and AT and T said we started looking at alternatives, but we estimated it would cost us 23 million dollars just to get started for that transition. And now that makes perfect sense because yeah. it's going to be cheaper than this insanity. So they found the number that would make them walk away. And Ubisoft. Now, do you say Ubisoft or Ubisoft? I like Ubisoft better, but I thought it was Ubisoft. I thought it was Ubisoft as well, but I actually don't know. Engagement challenge. Which one do you say? It's going to be hard for you to do that in text, huh? But uh, they have also found how to drive away their entire <coughs> customer base and destroy their stock price. Ubisoft investors push for company sale as its shares hit a decade low. I hadn't even heard of the Star Wars Outlaws game. Apparently no one did. Yeah. This was one of their, uh, like... No pre-orders, no sales, and no one's playing it on Steam. Do you think how much of that is people don't trust Ubisoft, and how much of that is people are just worn out with Star Wars? Equal. Yeah. Equal points, I would say. Yeah. I, the, also, they, they've got that Assassin's Creed game. They've delayed it yeah. because they're afraid that the same stink is going to be on that. Mm. So now they got nothing for the rest of the year. There's also an aspect of this that I think is um, there is a concerted effort to um, make Ubisoft look way worse than it is in order to drive down the share price in order to make them an acquisition target, I suspect. Well, their share price was under $2. So. Ubisoft has historically had a lot of hilariously stupid missteps handling them. They pointed out that they're the most hated gaming company. They really, like... Yeah, I'm struggling to think of one that I've heard people... They, cry about more. They prefer the Broadcom model, where they have a beloved intellectual property, where they just crap all over it. <sighs> they were also famously the ones earlier in the year that came out with the headline that uh, gamers need to get comfortable not owning their games. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Was it them who also made the comment when Baldur's Gate came out that they were like, this is unreasonable to expect a game this good? <laughs> I can't remember if that was them or if it was someone else, but it was funny. 
And uh, prophetically, it does seem like people are very comfortable not owning Ubisoft games at this point. I celebrate it. <laughs> In stark contrast, once again, we look at Valve, who is not doing the worst possible thing, but actually maybe making the world a slightly better place for gamers. The Arch Linux team is now working directly with Valve. SteamOS and Arch should both benefit greatly. Notably, not publicly traded. <laughs> <laughs> I, there really wasn't a lot to this. Uh, this is, Valve didn't say anything. This was just an announcement from Arch. They were like, hey, we're working a little closely. Now, the Steam Deck famously has a lot of stuff derived from Arch Linux. This, in my mind, means that you know it looks like Arch Linux is, is, is winning the distro wars and may even be the basis of some future Valve Linux operating system that um, enables gaming on more than just the Steam Deck. Uh, it's interesting to point out that because Arch and Linux are completely open source, for real, you know, the real open source, Valve is not, they don't have to give them anything. They put it in the Steam Deck, totally fair. But they chose to try and improve everybody's. What other company would ever do that? <sighs> Very few anymore. And moving into social media. and This, this, is, is, a, this is a bait story for yourself. You put, you put this in the list and I was like, Ryan did this to bait himself. <laughs> well, it makes me angry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it should make you angry as well. Oh, yeah, it makes me angry too, but I knew you'd be the most angry. People are posting fake animal rescues for social media likes. And some of them are linked here and it is really sad and, and not depressing. Just, not just likes, but also money. Yeah. They put PayPal links in them. I saw a, a social media post. I can't remember where it was. Maybe Reddit. And somebody had, there was a mongoose and a cobra in like a little hole together. Don't they fight? And I was like, how? Yeah, they were fighting. And I was like, how did that happen? And the comments were like, they staged this. Oh. <laughs> Somebody just was doing fight club. Well, that's like when you see, yeah, the animal rescue and it's just. M meanwhile, why Ala is there a camera on? Alaska has the, we'll have the nonsense story oh. at the end of the week about the bear fight. So cats, number one, but number two, you would think would be puppies, right? No, number two is monkeys. Hmm. So I guess that's, you know, not an American thing obviously but uh yeah 1022 links showing fake rescue content across social media those are probably just the ones that they can verify are fake too right yeah, yeah. how horrible it is terrible <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know i won't call this terrible it's a sign of the times for sure well, but she, you, she's getting her money you can't argue right yeah. I mean, you can't be mad at the girl the uh a podcast called Talk Tua becomes the third most popular podcast on Spotify in the U.S. after the Joe Rogan Experience and the Tucker Carlson Show, which is incredible. She's making use of that 15 minutes. Sponsored, it, or I don't know, sponsored, I guess one of the uh, the Paul brothers oh. has a podcast network, so he's behind this. He's producing this. But it's popular. People like it. They've had some big celebrity guests, too. I haven't listened to it, so I, I can't imagine. Like, the only clip I've ever seen of her is just drunk on the street. So it's like, I don't know what her personality is actually the, like. The meme, though, is that anytime no one has watched some of the stuff, but the meme is in the comments, somebody will reply. It's like, oh, yeah, I like her take on quantum physics. Or, oh, yeah, I like her take <laughs> on peace in the Middle East. And, and it goes on to explain, like, some elaborate thing. And it's like, mm -hmm. I don't think you actually got that from her. <laughs> well, you know what? I wish you luck. That is amazing. Huh. It's great. I, Get you know, your money. It's uh, it's it's also sad, in a way, for society in that, like, like us, she's a real person, and like, mm. there's not a lot different. But I feel like that the element, you know, funding her and doing all this other kind of stuff is more manufactured. Is more on the side of the uh, animal suffering for likes side than the real thing but like people are like oh they latch on to realism people like realism but then it's like oh the realism has to be packaged and we can't just that's actually a thing they've noticed in, as a marketing trend they say it's it's getting more difficult to market to gen z and millennials because like we see authenticity as valuable but when they try to package it up it becomes inauthentic yeah Meaning that she could have just said, I'm doing this thing around my kitchen table and yeah. maybe has... Uh, but then what? she doesn't have the cool neon sign. So. <laughs> we got a green screen. Yeah, yeah. We got a bunch of lights. 
But we are around the kitchen table, which this is hilarious. Is, yeah, this is a kitchen table. And also, we have day jobs. So <laughs> <laughs> Everything you just said is why police body cams are the ultimate form of entertainment. Mm. Yeah. It's pure reality. It's terrifying, but it's entertaining. And Meta, I'm so tired of these stories. I mean, yeah. it's just the same thing over and over. Meta's been hit with a new author copyright lawsuit over AI training. <laughs> the lawyers are trying to find a hole in Meta's defenses. Why Why Meta, not OpenAI or one of the others? Because this guy was able to prove mm. somehow that his book was in there. In Meta's or more in than particular. He, he yeah. had several books, actually. Or he thinks he can. And Reddit. Boy, Reddit. They tasted the, the reality earlier in the year and they didn't like it and they're making sure that's never going to happen again. Reddit is making it uh, making site-wide protests basically impossible by limiting controls that moderators have. Basically you can't flip your uh, subreddit from public to private anymore. It's harder to mark things as not safe for work if typically you don't have not safe for work content etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Reddit must control the flow of information and you mean nothing. Even It's your community. It's not. It's Reddit's it's, community. It's publicly traded now so they have to protect the shareholders. Not only publicly traded but owned by huge conglomerate media dissent company. will not be tolerated we got to protect our investment and it's also the source of all human knowledge for ai right so it seems like it because i know i have to put reddit at the end of a lot of my searches anymore <laughs> uh, we're still doing this we're still doing this in 2024 and nintendo not just going after the emulators now this is interesting because every headline i saw here acted like this was a new thing but it's not They've done this before. Uh, the, there is a new aspect. Nintendo is now going after YouTube accounts which show its games being emulated. Not just emulated. The headline is the the uh, someone had a thumbnail and B-roll but didn't mention it at all. And it looked like the title screen. It could have been a background. And Nintendo was like, nope. And it, it had been up for three years. And deleted. Then, it, Nintendo was just like, nope, deleted. So this is a specific retro game core YouTube channel, uh, he is saying that they are, like you say, striking old videos and basically just trying to destroy him. And so now he's announced that he will not do anything related to Nintendo from now on, which is a win for Nintendo. I, I'm baffled by the the strategy behind Nintendo. Just like, don't talk about our games. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's weird. It's right? weird, yeah. Because like, let's look back at Star Wars Outlaw. Nobody knows about Star Wars Outlaw. It's the death sentence for a game. But not only will we not talk about them, we will actively talk about how Nintendo should not be supported and should face the corporate death penalty due to lack of revenue. Yeah. I mean, Nintendo has some great IPs. They make some great games. And I actually own a Nintendo Switch somewhere in a drawer. But I'm never going to give them a dollar again. Yeah. I mean, well, unless they... You know, they buy Valve yeah. <laughs> when Gaben dies. Oh. I think also when you have when you have intellectual property that is this iconic in culture, you have to give the people that are excited about it a little bit of leeway. And they haven't, and that's disappointing. It's, but it's see, corporate ownership of our stories. And but that's the other thing they do. It's interesting because like with the Star Wars stuff, they have what they refer to as the access pigs, which are influencers and YouTubers, mm -hmm. unlike this guy, who will only ever say exactly what they know the company wants them to say because they get access. That has to be disclosed under law, and yet it often is not. <laughs> well, I mean, in terms of like Nintendo intellectual property, I mean, I, I own, is it is it licensed or is it sold? If it's sold, I have at least five or six copies of the various Final Fantasy games and two or three copies of basically all the other Nintendo games that I enjoy. That's Sony, though. Right? Or no, it's Square. Well, I mean, they were implemented on, on Nintendo's platform. And so, it's like, I want to take those bits and enjoy them wherever. Is the requirement that I... Um, I have to have a, a full, you know, Super Nintendo in there somewhere? Yes. Or uh, can I ship of Theseus to Super Nintendo? Like parts of it die, I replace the parts that died with no. parts that are compatible. If you take it apart and that sticker is broken, <laughs> that's terrorism. That's what Nintendo believes. You're, you're yes, terrorizing Nintendo. I, I think you're right that that's what Nintendo believes. But you know, I own this cartridge, therefore I own this bitstream, and I have rights to run the ROM 
just the one copy, that's where we should be with property rights. That's just pro- property rights are important in America, supposedly. Just using the word ROM, that's a strike. Yeah. <laughs> Property rights are important if you're a corporation. And if it's a licensed, it seems like the my rights under the license would be even more in this kind of a scenario to format shift and do everything else. It's like you can you can time shift and format shift with a VCR. This is like that for a video game. All right. You've wasted however many times. Forty minutes. Forty minutes. Good yeah. for us. We tried. We'll see you guys on Friday with a big dose of nonsense. Bye.